No. It is part of God's plan for you that you prosper. Somebody will be asking me, is that the fruitfulness? Let me, let me break it down. In Genesis chapter 1, we are going to read that scripture. We'll read verse 26 and read verse 28 so that you know where I'm coming from. Studio. Uh, Amos. Where's Amos? He has run away. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Please, they should train somebody that will know how to navigate scriptures. Just like they do it in Canaan land. Who we'll call for scripture, it will take them almost one minute before they will find it. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. In our image who do you look like? The child of a goat is a goat. The child of a monkey is a monkey. The child of God is what? A God. Let us make man in our image. Now let's go to verse 28. And God. Okay, let's take 27 so that it won't look as if. Eh? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be. Be. Fruitful. Be. Anything God said be, must be. No devil can be what God has said be. No witch anywhere can be. Remain like this. Be means see how you are going to be. No devil will turn you like this. So when God said be, everything around you must conform to the word be. Be fruitful. And multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That's what be fruitful means produce after our kind, increase after our kind, prosper after our kind. Have a good outcome in whatever you do after our kind. Be fruitful. Have a favorable outcome. Now, if a man leaves his house and is on a journey, he has gone and come back. The first thing the wife will ask, how was the journey? What is she trying to know? Is there any good news? True of us. So that's what be fruitful cuts across every area of your life. Increase. Multiply. Have a good outcome. Flourish in whatever you do. Why? The reason for the flourishing for the good outcome, for the success, for the prospering, is because you carry something, image. Tell with me, image. image. 
Last Sunday, we talked about identity. <laughs> now, if your wife gives birth and the child does not have a resemblance of father or mother, they will say, <laughs> from what I'm seeing, we need to go and do DNA tests too. Are you sure this child is your own? Let's go and confirm. What are they trying to say? The image does not look like you. So if you are poor, you don't look like God. You look like Satan. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? Huh? <laughs> it only implies that you have been disfigured in the realm of the spirit. Yes. If your child is failing, you don't talk much about him. But if your child is succeeding, are you aware that my son is around? <laughs> Did you hear of the latest? He won all the awards. You always talk of the one that is doing well. But the one that is not doing well, you make sure he is hidden inside the house. Don't come out before you come out and disgrace me. I might say something to somebody. So your image must be well reflected. And one of the image God wants you to reflect. Prosper on all sides. I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be. That word be is coming out again. Now let's take a look at some of the scriptures before we now look at the things that will make you prosper beyond limits. Genesis chapter 26 Genesis 26 verse 12 Then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man was great, and went forward, and grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks, possession of hearts, and great stores of servants, and the Philistines envied him. Let's go again. Genesis 30 verse 42. We are looking at the people God prospered though. Verse 42. But when the cattle were feeble, he puts them not in. So the feebler were Labans and the stronger Jacobs. And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and made servants and men servants and camel and asses. Now we move on again to Genesis 47. Just follow me. We want to have all the scriptural proofs. Genesis 47 verse 27. And Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt in the country of Goshen and they had possession therein and grew and multiply exceedingly. Is that in your Bible? Yeah. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful. Is that in your Bible? And increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. Confirming subdued the earth. Now let's move on again. First Chronicle 29 verse 25 And the Lord magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. Move on again. To Second Chronicle chapter one, you will see something now. Verse 
Verse 1. And Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom. And the Lord his God was with him and magnified him exceedingly. Are you seeing that word again? Now let's go to chapter 17 of the same second chronicle. Verse 11. Also, some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat present and tribute silver and the Arabians brought him flocks, 7,000 and 700 rams and 7,000 and 700 he goats. And Jehoshaphat works great exceedingly and he built in Judea castles and cities of store and he had more business in the city of Judah and the men of war, mighty men of valor, were in Jerusalem. And these are the numbers of them according to the house of their father, of Judah, the captain of thousands, Adna, the chief, and with him, mighty men of valor, 300,000. And next to him was Johanina, the captain, and with him, 204 score thousand. And next him was Amasia, the son of Zitri, who willingly offered himself unto the Lord, and with him 200,000 mighty men of valor. Now let's take the last one, Second Chronicle 32, verse 27. Thirty-two. I'm sorry. Verse seventeen. Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high place yet unto the Lord. Now the rest of the act of Manasseh and his prayer unto God and the word of the seer that speak to him. Am I correct? Oh, I'm sorry. 32.27. Sorry, I was reading 33. And Ahaziah had exceeding much riches. Is it in your Bible? Yeah. And honor. And he made himself treasuries for silver and for gold and for precious stones and for spices and for shield and for all manner of pleasant jewels. Storehouses also for the increase of corn and wine and oil and stores of all manner of beasts and coats for flocks. Moreover, he provided him cities and possession of flocks. He had ranches and herds in abundance for God has given him substance very what? If you are poor, your generation will curse you. They will not believe your God. Now from the scriptures we have read, every one child of God is in the lineage of abundant wealth, unending riches. All these things we are given to them by God. And I know God is not partial. Scripture said, this same Lord is good unto all and richly bless all that calls upon his name. If God blesses all, you are not an exemption. I say you are not an exemption. That's why I want you today to begin to look beyond where you are. Because very soon, you will change levels. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say it better amen. Yeah. It is your heritage in Christ and in God to prosper beyond limits. No man is permitted to determine how much you will be blessed. You are the one that will determine it. No man is permitted to determine how far you will go. In the blessings of God, you are the one that will determine it.
If God said, I wish above all things that you prosper, meaning your prospering is a priority in the sight of God. It's a priority. What do I mean by priority? If there are three things God is thinking of doing, number one in your life is how you will prosper. In economics, we are taught scale of preference. You place your demands according to priority, which means once this one is solved, other things can be taken care of. Am I saying something to somebody? Now, hear this. Every one of us, God desires that we prosper exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Abraham's age was not a limitation. God called him at 75 in chapter 12. In chapter 13, God has blessed him in all things. And he had cattles. He had this. And God has blessed him in all things. From the scriptures we just read, some of them had stores where they keep gold. Where they keep silver. They had ranches. <laughs> I tell you something. Some of you that I'm seeing now, before this year will be over, people will be surprised at the blessings that have entered your life. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. How do I step into the realm of prospering beyond limits? The part of the just, Proverbs 4, 18, it's like a shiny light. That shine brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Number one thing that will bring you to the realm of prospering beyond limit is vision. Tell your neighbor vision. Where there is no vision, there are people what? Perish. Where there is no vision. So vision is what determines provision. Even when God called Abraham, he said, Abraham, look up. Look to the north. Look to the south. Look to the east. Look to the west. As far as your eyes can see. The farther you see, the farther you go. The brighter you see, the brighter it becomes. As far. God still operates as far as your eyes can see. Permit me to say this to you. God can never do in your life what you have never seen. God can never open a door that you have never seen. Jeremiah, what seest thou? He said, I see the rod of an almond tree. He said, thou hast well seen. You say, I will, I will hasten my word to perform it. So you are where you are now because of what you are seeing. If you see brighter, you will go further. Lafia is not your problem. You are your problem. It's because I'm in Lafia, Pastor. That's why things are not working. It's a lie. Genesis 13 and verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lot was separated from him, there are people that need to be separated from you. There are enemies of vision. They are not allowing you to see well. He said, lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art, northwards and southwards and eastwards and westward, for all the land which thou seest, did he say all the children? All the land which thou seest. He said, I will give it. 
and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. So that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Prosper beyond limits. You can't count it. Papa said two weeks ago, some people are angry that I'm prospering. Say, go and die! Go and hug transformer! How many of us had it that day? Hear me, If you are angry that I'm prospering, you may die quick. Very simple. He said, go and die! No apologies. Do you know what? Some people are afraid of prospering so that they will not go to the village. I know your problem. You are afraid so that they will not do enchantment for you. By the time I finish schooling you, any person that dear you will die and the prosperity will continue. You are afraid. That's why when you want to go to a village, you enter transport. You don't want them to know that you have bought a car. Yes, I agree. I agree. But the story, there is a time to take cover. And there is a time to take over. There are two different things. Take cover and take over. There are two different things. When you have become spiritually robust, you now become a spiritual terrorist. When you go to the village, they will be afraid. Am I saying something to somebody? Because at that point in time, they cannot enchant anything. If God makes up his mind to bless you, he will also preserve you and the blessing. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? When God blessed Isaac, the Philistines left him alone. You must get to the point where they must leave you alone. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So you must have vision. And the vision is not just temporary. Vision is a growing thing. It's a progressive thing. Line upon line. There are some things you can't see now. But as you are growing, God is opening your eyes to see them. That's how vision is. Vision is progressive. It's not static. You grow in vision. As you are growing in vision, you are growing in prosperity. You are growing in blessings. What you couldn't see five years, now you are seeing them. So as your vision is enlarging, that's how God is enlarging your coast. I want you to hear this. Your vision determines your portion. Your vision determines your portion. So if you have a small vision, you will have a small portion. And God said something. This they have begun to imagine. And nothing shall be restrained from them. Which means, if you can see it, I can give it. If you can see it, I can do it. Let me shock you. Where you are walking is not a limitation. Where you are walking is just like a foundation. It's a good place to start. If you are not prospering, where you are walking is not the problem. The problem is you cannot see beyond where you are. God did not limit what he will do in your life to your salary. If everything God will bring to pass in our life is tied to salary, then favor is irrelevant. Grace is irrelevant. 
We don't need to talk about open door. We should go and labor. So far, God forbid batting. So vision is what rules. If you can see it, God can make a way for it. But if you cannot see it, you may end up where you started. Number two, thing that can bring you to the point of prospering beyond limit is what we call knowledge. We're going to explore the two dimensions of knowledge. Job If Papa lacked vision, I don't think that this ministry will be where it is now. Am I saying something to somebody? If he lacked vision, this ministry wouldn't have been where it is now. I know many are still thinking that Papa is rich because he's collecting tight. God forbid. Many are still thinking that Papa is rich because he's collecting prophet offering. Let me shock you. Papa has dangerous investments. I won't go beyond that. Some people think that the jet is riding that is from church money. It's not from church money. Huh? Job 22, verse 21. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby, good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the Lord from his mouth and lay up his word in thy heart. If thou returns to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity from thy tabernacle. Look at verse 24. Then shalt thou lay up gold as what? And the gold of offer as the stones of the brook. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty. And thou shalt have plenty. Acquaint now thyself and be at peace. Press to know God. No wonder Paul said that I may know him. The more you know God, the more hopeful you become. In Ephesians 1, reading down from verse 17, Paul said that you may know the hope of his calling and the riches of the inheritance. Many of us are just... Um, in church, hoping to go to heaven. You hear me? Before you go to heaven, you must prosper here well. Because if you don't prosper here well, I don't know how you will live there. You may be living in a boy's quarter. Oh, you don't know? <laughs> Maybe you will live inside my boy's quarter. Jesus said, in my father's house. What does a mansion look like? What does a mansion look like? Are you desiring one? What does a mansion look like? That's why you must be desiring a magnificent structure here. If you like, you can come. I can show you some of the, the houses I want to build in my phone. The way the kitchen structure will look like. The kind of the beds. Oh my God. I'm practicing how heaven will look like. Because I don't want to go and be in a Lazarus boy's quarter. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Huh? Now, I know you may be angry, but there is what we call the law of attraction. 
Whatever you can picture now is what you will see in your future tomorrow. So if you like, be thinking of a boy squatter. You go see boy squatter. You're already planning how you live like a boy squatter in heaven. So you must start. At, maybe you have not seen again in scripture. He said, you shall build goodly houses. I don't know what your definition of goodly houses is. He said, you shall build goodly houses and live in them. He said, you will not labor and another will eat. So any person that is planning that you will build, that you will labor, and they will wipe you out, God will kill that person. I tell you the truth. Some people are planning for boy squatter. You better change because when you get to heaven, you'll be ashamed. When you see people living in their mansion, you'll say, where is my size? They say, see boy squatter, now there you came from. You came from a boy squatter, enter boy squatter. Praise God. <laughs> Acquaint now thyself. Get to know God. Desire to know God. The people that do know their God. Don't be a shallow Christian. Be proud of your God. I want to know God. I want to know you. Lord, reveal yourself to me. You can't desire to know God and not love God. The two go together. The more you love God, the more he reveals secrets to you. The secret things belong to the Lord. But the things revealed that for us and for our children's children. So every, anything God is revealing to you now is what will enable you to prosper where others are failing. When men are saying there is a casting down, he said, Thou shalt say, There is a lifting up. You are not going down because the economy is down. You are going down because you lack knowledge. He said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Not that knowledge is not available. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 3. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 3. I mean verse 13, sorry. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity, financial captivity, because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dry up with thirst. My people are gone into captivity. Not that knowledge is not available. Hear me. Hear me well. Hear me well. In this era, if you must command wealth, you must have knowledge. If you must command wealth, you must do what? You must have knowledge. Oh. Financial literacy is what opens up destinies. Having money does not make you rich. You can have money today and be poor tomorrow. But if you have knowledge of how to make money, create money, man, you will command abundance. Proverbs 24, verse 3. We have looked at the first side of knowledge. Let's look at the other side now. The first one says, Acquaint now thyself and be at peace. The second one is... Um, Proverbs 24 verse 3. True wisdom is an house built it. And by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall all the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant. Through what? And by knowledge shall all the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant Riches, a wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge. Increase that what? <laughs> Money determines strength. Now 
No one that they say that money is a defense. Who has money who is the one that has control? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There's a book they call The Conspiracy of the Rich. How many of you have seen that book? Some have seen it. They have not read it. They are only, only seeing the picture. They have not read it. The white will always want the poor to remain poor. Why? There is an information they are hiding from them. Go and learn it. If you must be rich in this era, it must be by knowledge. Why? There are informations you need to get. You see, that what, that's why the poor will always be poor. The poor will always be poor. If there is anything they are fighting, is to hide this information. Lock you out from this information. Because if you know it, you are broken through. You have escaped their bondage. I may not say some things again. There are some things I will have said now, but uh, before some people will carry me to DSS. Knowledge is power. It breaks bondage. It breaks financial bondage. I tell you, I make bold to say it, I can never be poor. I can never be poor. No matter where I'm transferred to. When you go for increasing knowledge, you break more limits. Let me tell you, when you know what others don't know, you are bound to have what others don't have. When you know what others don't know, you can dare what others can't dare. There is something the world you know that you don't know about. The only thing the poor man knows is man must struggle. Am I saying it? Man must struggle. But I tell you, it's not everybody that is struggling. The reason why you need to go for knowledge, there is what we call creative thinking. It's a level of information that God will put in your, in your mind now. You will now be thinking how wealth can be created. Go for knowledge. Number three. We have looked at vision. We have looked at knowledge. Number three is giving. Scripture said, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. In 2003, they took all of my sites to Canaan land for computer proficiency. That was when they wanted to do away with um, secretary stuff so that every pastor can handle his thing. Can handle, you can go to MS Word, you can go to Microsoft, do anything you want to do. You can type your mail and send it. So, they were taking us in batches. And if you fail, if you fail that test, you must end up in a village church. Yes. I know some of my men that ended up in a village church. Till now, they are struggling to enter city. They have been hanging around village, village, village. Because the village spirit is still following them. <laughs> it's a serious matter, so, I entered into the... Then I said, okay, you enter here. As I entered, I entered into the office of the executive secretary. I saw a very big board. Your seed determines your future. The image of the thing almost overshadowed me from what I came to do. Your seed determines your future. Hear me? If you must prosper beyond limits... You must have your seed. And scripture says, He gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Your seed has power to crush your limitation. 
whether it is family background or they are place embargo over everyone in your family if you have your seed you will damage that embargo which can stop your prayer if you are not powerful but let them eat it and die that's why it's difficult for a witch to swallow a sacrifice I will talk more on that in the third service. Abundant living is guaranteed by abundant sowing. He that sows sparingly shall do what? He that sows bountifully. I like what one of my mentors said, and it is scriptural. The giving grace is what makes every other grace available. Now God is able to make all grace to abound. So that in all things and at all time, you will abound in every good works. The giving grace makes every other grace to do what? Abound. The giving grace. So your seed connects you to multiplication. If you want to enter into limitless blessings, limitless opportunities, <laughs> every time a seed enters your hand, it gives seed. There is what to eat and there is what to sow. But unfortunately in the church, some people eat both their seed and eat both their fruits. I will talk more on this in the second service, but let me just mention what you need to hear now. Your seed has power to change the climates. Your seed has power to break your hardship. Your seed has power to damage scarcity. You need your seed to eliminate limitation. You need your seed. If you want things to turn around for you, locate your seed. Don't tell me you don't have anything to sow. Locate your seed. Start small. It is not when it is big that you start sowing. It's a journey. Seed sowing is a journey. You determine the journey. You determine when you change level. Scripture says he gives it to the sower and bread to the eater. When I desperately needed a change, I will sow my transport money and trek to church. It was that bad to the point that even our last born death, they were abusing me. Anything you give, I go so. Anything you give, I go so. One day, you go carry us, go so. Now they are reaping the dividends of the sowing. So, so. So, you're glorious tomorrow. Let me tell you don't pity any believer. I, will, I, I don't pity people. Do you know why I don't pity people? The person you pity today can experience and turn around tomorrow. Do you know in scripture when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion? We were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said the hidden among themselves, the Lord have done great thing. The Lord have done great thing. Whereof we are glad. You may be down today but not tomorrow. But hear me. Start charting your course. Learn how to give. Giving starts by tithing. Tithing sets the foundation. Don't pretend that you don't have anything to give. If you are heading for a glorious tomorrow, start it now. Start it now. Pay your tithes. Give your offering. From giving your offering, you give to the poor. You give to the widows. 
every opportunity you have to sow into kingdom projects, you sow. And from there, you move to sow into prophets. I know some people don't like that one. But let me mention it for the reason of people who are serious. I'm not saying it because I'm looking for anything from your hand. I'm saying it. I'm telling you the truth. It is not what you give me that prospers me. It is what I sow. It's not, hear it. It's not what you give me that prospers me. It's what me I sow. It's what me I sow. If I refuse to sow, I will be a beggar. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If I refuse to sow, I will be a beggar. Bishop Abiyu has said something which is scriptural. Your heavenly father gives you a place in heaven. But your spiritual father gives you a place on the earth. Your prophet determines your profits. If you are profitless, you will be profitless. What is Oyedepo looking for in our offering? What is he looking for? Is he not blessed? Is he not blessed? He's not looking for what I will give him that will make him rich. But I need to connect to the grace that is upon him for my story to change. I might say something to somebody. It's people that lack understanding. They think that when they give to, I'm not giving him again. Please keep your change. Pockets that your change. I am blessed, man. Pastor Tony is blessed. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? I know the secret. I am treading on it dangerously. I've, I've told you before, I've stopped collecting salary six years ago. As he's come, as he's coming, I'm sowing it out. Have I begged? But you must start somewhere. You must do what? If you must prosper beyond limits, <laughs> don't forget, no man receiveth anything except it be given to him from where? Above. From above. Every good and perfect gift coming from the Father of light in whom there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. I desperately needed a financial change. And I located the prophets that carry this grace. Not all pastors or prophets carry the grace. Am I saying the truth? Because a pastor that is not giving does not have power to speak blessing into your life and it will work. Because some pastors don't pay tight. Oh, you don't know? Some pastors in town, they don't pay tight. They are Melchizedek. Lay it at the apostles' feet. They don't pay tight. <laughs> is it surprising to you? They don't pay tight. So how can one that is not a blessing now come and bless you? <laughs> you have put your money on the rock. It cannot produce. I needed this thing desperately and I located who the thing is working in their life. Oyedeko number one. Abuye number two. Bishop Aremu number three. Pastor Jeme number four. Paul Leninche number five. Ibiomi number six. Adegoye number seven. Apostle Suleiman number eight. So I connected to these graces. So, beyond the salary, as other blessings come, I make sure all of them I'm sowing into their life. Make sure I sow, I sow, I'm sowing regularly, not occasionally, not once in a year. Regularly. This year now, I want to make sure that Copeland's own is permanent. Because that one is a generational father. There are people that must open your heavens. Every 
every time they speak. The last time we went and gave a seat to Bishop Abiy and those people that I said, the Lord enlarge your coast. So everyone that was involved in that seat, the Lord enlarge your coast. Oh. You better say amen now. Yeah. Some people are wondering, what are they talking about? <laughs> and yesterday, my mother called me. He said, I was praying and God said, I should tell you that he will enlarge your coast. I said, confirmation. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You don't enter it by accident. You don't enter it by accident. There are principles you must trade for these things to work in your life. I reserve the remaining one for next Sunday. Number four is loving God. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Love God. You don't love God because you come to Sunday, Sunday service. The proof of your love is your commitment towards the advancement of the house. Haggai chapter 1. Let's take it from verse 13. Haggai chapter 1 from verse 13. Studio, are you up now? Then spake Haggai, the Lord's messenger, in the Lord's message unto the people, saying, I am with thee, saith the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltia, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josadek, and the high priest, and the spirit of all, that, of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord, of host their God. The next verse, in the four and twenty day of the sixth month, in the second year of Darius the king. The next verse now, and the seventh month, in one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltia, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josadek the high priest, and to the residue of the people, saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, son of Josadek, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord. And walk for I am with you, said the Lord of hosts. The next verse now, according to the word that I have covenanted with you, when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you. Fear ye not. The next verse now, for thou said the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heaven, and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. The next verse now, the silver is mine, Go back now. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. Say it, the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Say it, the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace. Say it, the Lord of hosts. But in another part, let's stop there now. In another part he said, because you have abandoned my house. He said, therefore, I have withheld dues from you. I've withheld blessings from pouring on you. Why? Because you have abandoned my house. That goes to let you know your love for his house determines the flow to your house. If blessing is not flowing to your house, go and check your heartometer. Check your heartometer. Is my heart longing for God? People that pursue good don't get good. It's only people that pursue God. I don't know what you are pursuing. Start pursuing God. Start pursuing God. And good will begin to follow you. Let your love for God never go down. Let your love for God be on the increase. Think of growing in love. Think of growing in service. You shall 
you shall serve i shall bless you shall serve i shall bless the more your heart is longing after god i bet you things will begin to work for you matthew 6 33 seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things that the dentists do seek after shall be added how many things and lastly speaking is in the mouth prosperity is also in the mouth hidden in the tongue is the power of life and death and them that love it shall eat the fruit thereof the mouth you can use your mouth and buy poverty you can use your mouth and buy lack you can use your mouth and buy hardship i don't have things are tight I don't understand this country. Oh. Everywhere is dry. For you. Not for me. Say not a confederacy. What they call a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear. Isaiah chapter 8. The way some people are looking at me. Isaiah chapter 8, verse, verse, is it verse 9 or 10? Eh? 12, okay. Say not a confederacy to all them to which these people shall say, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Say, and God declared, you shall have whatsoever. You shall have what? So I'm not afraid to say it. I will be, I will be rich. I don't need your confirmation. <laughs> I might say something to somebody. I don't need your confirmation. My vote is the only one that I need. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I will be super blessed. I will be blessed in the order of Abraham. A time is coming. Hear me. I will be sponsoring minimum 1,000 persons on school fees. Just like Papa them are doing very soon. Will be building churches. It's not necessarily must be a winner's chapel. If I just like the one we are seeing, uh, what's the name of that place? We look at the thing, it's very bad. We say, the moment this thing comes, we'll go and knock those people with them one building. As you are thinking, God is saying, Is this what you are thinking? I will show you. Now, hear me. The condition is, I will bless you, and thou shalt become what? A blessing. Not me, my wife, and I. Me, my wife, and my children. You will be poor. Your money will not go beyond you, your family. Every time you are thinking of outreach, you become rich. What is outreach? Outreach is simply reaching out, out of the abundance that God has blessed you with. Don't be thinking like a consumer. Be thinking as one that is going to step into. Because you must see yourself first in that position before it becomes a reality. Some of us are not just seeing it at all. We feel that God has a special class of people that must enter it. It's a lie. It's a lie. Begin to declare it. Begin to say it. Papa said, I'm not surprised at where we are. I would have rather been surprised if we were not there. I would have rather been surprised if we were not there. He said, the things we are seeing now, I've been saying it 20 years ago. So whatever you are saying now, you will see it in your future. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better, amen. amen. So start saying it. 
The cheapest way to change the way you talk is to change what you see. And don't keep any poverty person around you. It's a bad spirit. They can talk you into lack. This country, eh? Thank God they have known now. If you come to the, to the office, I watch your mouth. So that if you are saying the bad one, I stop you immediately. I just pour the oil on your head. I say, go. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying now? Can you now see the rich always like company with the rich? Have you, have you seen the reason now? Poverty is contagious. Some people, they don't come to you for ideas. They come for gossip. If you have a gossiping partner, you are a poor man. Do you know why? You don't get vision. The only vision is uh, who they will speak against. So they look for poor people like them. Because rich people, the only thing they discuss is ideas. Innovation. Poor people, they talk about people. You don't see See what team pastor they talk again? You are poor. Anytime you listen to gossip, it's the poverty spirit that is following you. Poor. All my men that works with me, if they call me, they know what to say. They must say, sir, have you looked at this? Have you seen this? Have you seen this? I said, okay, give me time, let me look at it. They dare not. Say with me, they dare not. They dare not. Come to tell me about anybody. Because the next thing you hear, you are looking for trouble. I have more than enough to focus on. Oyedebo has more than enough to keep him busy. Do you know why? You are not busy. So Satan must give you what will keep you busy. If you must prosper beyond limits, say things that are bigger than your size. Say things that are bigger than your salary. So that when God brings it to pass, you will know that this is not my hand. This is the hand of God. This is the hand of God. And do you know what? When you begin to say it, watch out. God will begin to connect you with people that will help you actualize it. God will now begin to move your dream makers, your dream helpers, your destiny projectors. So start saying it. Start saying it. Parents, please start teaching your children about dreams and visions. Start telling them about goals. Start telling them now. Let them start knowing this thing. So that they will not be limited to certificates. None of my children will be limited to certificates. Lie, lie. They already know. They already know. Start saying it. Start declaring it. Very soon I will have a house in Port Harcourt. I will have estates in Abuja. I will have estates in Lagos. Don't tell me, ah, Lagos land is expensive. God will give you expensive money. You better say a good amen. amen. Who has been to Port Harcourt before? How many of you know where Ibiomi's church is? You know where Ibiomi's church is? Now, that's the heart of Jiarue. What he's now doing is buying and breaking. <laughs> they have bought the whole of that street. They enter the next side. They buy the break. They turn into car park. You need to have dangerous money to become an influence. As they buy, they break. Some may build pastoral quarters where the pastors are staying. As they buy, it break. As they buy, it break. When not Dili wanted to uproot him from Port Harcourt, he prayed one dangerous prayer for Dili. Today, all Dili cannot do. <coughs> he can't cough. Power pass power. You have spiritual power. You have money power. 
you are in dominion. <laughs> you must enter there. Whatever has disfigured you spiritually, your image will be turned around today. Whoever shot an arrow of poverty for you that is making you think like a poor man, living like a poor man, behaving like a poor man, talking like a poor man, that arrow will backfire today. God's plan and purpose for you is to prosper beyond limits. We met somebody recently after we came back, me and my wife, my wife couldn't sleep, man, I couldn't sleep. The vision became enlarged. Because wherever you see yourself, that's where God will bring you to. Please, start seeing where. What's yes thou? Don't cry about the salary. Your salary can be a seed. Oh, you don't know? Your salary can be a seed. It's not everything in the salary you can eat. You can sow. It will grow. You sow again. It will grow. You are changing. You are changing. You are changing. Before you know what's happening, you become a force to be reckoned with. Rise up to your feet. If you don't hate poverty, you can't damage it. What did I say? If you don't hate poverty, you will transfer it to your children. Say, God forbid. God forbid. It's only what you hate you will damage. So if you hate poverty, get ready. You are among those that God will use to rewrite your family story. Amen. Somebody is not saying amen. amen. Now the question is, what's yes thou? Buhari is not your problem. You are your problem. We have eyes that look, but very few that see. Buhari is not your problem. Oh. The economy of Nigeria is not your problem. <laughs> they ask Papa, where are you getting your this thing from? What's your source? He said, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. He said, my supply is beyond Nigeria. My supply is from the heavenly places. I want to let you know, the economy is not your problem. Connect to heaven's supply. What seest thou? I want you to pray. Lord, from today, I will not think poor. I will not look poor. I will not behave poor. I will not talk poor. I will give myself to covenant practice. I will give myself to the principles that makes the great great. Lift up your voice now and begin to talk to God. Lerando shakote predi zedonia. Likute lerendo shagadabaya. Lizokuta pra. Gerondo predi zekoteli and radada. Jekusizo lembro do shekloteri angadabada. Rema dala roche clopredi le zuzeli kata. Rushagado breketeli and the breketes of Zizo. Zizo zale mendredi le kote di hala. Minutes from your heart and cry out to God. My story must change. I refuse to be on the same spot. I refuse to be on the same spot. I must reflect the image of God. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful. I must reflect the image of God. Lerato le rouge gaderi obasata.
In Jesus' name we pray. All eyes closed, all heads bow. If you are here, you are not born again. You are already limited. The blessing that we just talked about is only for those that are in Christ. You can be in church and not be in Christ. Scripture says, if a man be in Christ, not if a man be in church. If a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things are become new. Wherever you are right now, you want to make it right with Jesus, wherever you are, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, congratulations. Wherever you are, carry your bag and your Bible and come. We are going to do your own anointing.